We got a chilling out landed Venata joining us, relaxing on the couch. How you doing, sir? How you guys doing? UFC 209, yeah. round the corner. David Timura, I Tamer. 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 Yeah. The opponent. We got a striker in front of you. How much fun is this going to be? Oh, it's, it's going to be awesome, man. I'm excited. The cat is, uh, you know, he's, he's a quality kickboxer. He's got a lot of K1 and Muay Thai fights, kickboxing fights. He's got he's got an extensive record in that. He's only five to one in MMA, including his fights on the show as well. He's got those as well. Um, but he, he's been doing it so long that all his habits are so ingrained into him, and we're going to be exposing a lot of those habits that he has. Compared to other opponents we talk, we've talked about, I think you know a lot more about David than some of the other guys. I think you've actually studied this guy. All right, man, we, we study everybody. We study everybody. We study McDessie and you know, saw what happened with that. We studied Ferguson, saw what happened with that. Uh, every other fight before that too, you know, we studied them as all, studied them all as much as we could. You know, this guy is another one. There's just a lot of footage, so we're able to study everything. So is it just in fighting, or do you, are you able to see patterns in a lot of things, in a lot of daily things? Yeah, I pick things up pretty quick. Like, I think I got a decent IQ. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was a question the IQ. Part of it we were talking about was the fight IQ, though, and you seem to pick up things inside the cage very quickly. That last win. Do you feel it when your brain is moving during a fight that fast no, and taking no. all this information? No, it, it's it's an interesting state of mind during when you fight. It's, a, it's an interesting flow state, man. And, and really, you there's no, not much thought. Like every once in a while, it's like, I'm going to do this. And, and just it's a split second thought, and then it happens. But everything's actions and reactions. And it's amazing because I'll, I'll throw stuff in a fight that I don't ever even practice. Like I've never thrown before. And it's just my body. Um, so it's my body flowing. It, it's um, it's totally in, in, impromptu. Like it's it's something I've never done before. It's it's an interesting state of mind where things just happen naturally. And yeah. How do you yeah. avoid falling into patterns? One of the most creative strikers we have in MMA. And again, you do things differently. In your last fight, we yeah. can see there were certain weapons you wanted to use to attack with, but you still hit them in kind of a random order. Yeah, that I mean that's just uh, constant evolution and. Never letting your opponent know your rhythm. Always changing your rhythm. It can't be the same rhythm all the time. Um, yeah, man, and just constantly evolving in here, putting together new combinations, finding out new tricks at work, um, new ways to put together your basics, and, and how to add on to that. Continual evolution. So it's something that you practice consistently oh, yes. is exactly that same mindset? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And now leading into this one, Las Vegas, expecting another performance bonus here. The thing with Tamer, which I love, is uh, he's chinny. So I've seen him get dropped in a lot of fight footage. Um, he hasn't been knocked out in MMA, I don't believe, but I've seen him get dropped by a handful of guys who don't have power in their strikes. So I'm expecting, I'm not expecting, I'm expecting to go out there and do my thing, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if the knockout comes. And it comes in highlight real fashion. You expected a knockout last time, but could you have expected the acclaim and the awards uh, that followed? Nah, uh, that's what I said. Like I, I don't expect a knockout. Like I just go in there. I focus on my skills. I focus on what I'm gonna do. Um, a lot of times the knockout comes as a result of that. So no, I, I definitely did not expect all that shit that came after the knockout, man. But fuck, I am grateful for it. What was it that you saw that McDessie was doing, as we can try to, you know, get a little bit in your mind, that made you see that he was opening for that spinning kick? I mean, he's, he's great at spinning shit, so, you know, I, I knew if I fake low, if you, if you watch the, the spin hook kick, when I initially start spinning, my leg is angled for a spinning side kick to the liver, and then it comes up and over. So it was just a fake low, went high, I knew he'd block low, open up his chin, and that's exactly what he did. So it's something... That I worked on. Worked okay. on. Yeah. I'm like you make it sound so basic. Oh, just just this simple. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing thing with me, man, is all that fancy shit's become my basics. So. And what has it been? There's three fights of yours on Fight Pass, and we can see you look at it from the uh, Pancras mm. to Tony Ferguson. Totally different fighter, and I know we talked about it. Some of it was a lot of the movement training you've been doing. 
but you hold your hands in a different position. Mm -hmm. There's a different flowiness and just confidence in your striking now. I mean, even if from the Tony Ferguson to the John McDessie fight, it's a different fight. You know, it's a different opponent, so I'm very adaptable in my fighting style, and I'm, I'm never coming to two fights the same way. I'm going to approach David Tamer in a completely different fashion. I approach my Desi, that I approach Ferguson, that I approach anybody else in my fight career. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a different puzzle that, that I need to attack in a different approach. Now, how do you look at MMA, look at getting in that cage and going to battle with somebody? Is it a chess match? What do you see it as? I'm just fucking fun. <laughs> it's fun? It's just fun. I'm just having fun, man. Like, there's a serious side to it. Yeah, like I want to win. I want to I make the extra 50 Gs. I want to get that title. I want to make a bunch of money. Uh, I don't give a shit about fame. But uh, for me, man, the main thing is just, it's fun. I fucking love the feeling. I love that, that build up. I love fight week, cutting the weight. Uh, that's the real battle to me. Like it sucks, but it's fucking arduous and the adversity. I love it. And then you get to go eat, and that's the best sip of water you ever had. Right after you step off that scale, then you fucking come up on fight day. You wake up, you walk down to the arena. You got a little bit of nerves. You start moving around. Those nerves just disappear, and you're just the embodiment of confidence at this point. And you fucking start walking out to that cage, and you get in there. And as soon as you touch gloves, it's just a flip of the switch, and you're instant flow state. And it's just, all right, let's go. I love it. What is the way in? What is the stare down? What does that moment mean to you? That's the most intense moment for me. I'm fucking like, I got adrenaline rush on 100 when I'm staring someone down at weigh-ins. I don't get nervous when I fight at all, man, but yeah, weigh-ins. So I'm, I'm hyped. I'm hyped right there. And it's fucking fun. And I'm unsure with your time in the UFC. Have you done the early weigh-ins and then the, yes, uh, the, yeah, the phony? Fights. Yeah. So, and how did that change your weight cutting process, the yeah, earlier yeah. weigh-ins? Um, yeah, now I cut the night before. I don't like cutting the morning of. I don't want to get up early, man. So, if I try to do half and half the night before, morning of, the morning of is always takes longer and just sucks. So, I just cut it all the night before get as much sleep as I can, wake up and step on the scale. And then, is there a difference in that stare down when it was the ceremonial one? It's all the same to me. All the it's, same? Yeah, it feels the same, you know. I'm just not as dehydrated, so I got a little more life energy in me. <laughs> but yeah, it feels the same. It feels the same. Yeah. Another big fight, UFC 209. What were you able to do, though, last time? We know you went on a trip after the Ferguson fight. What did you were able to do with this bonus? Um... Got a little bit of accessories from my truck. I went to Thailand right after the fight. Worked with the Edo Portal for a week. Um, that was awesome. And I went, took my girlfriend to the Bahamas for Christmas. Chilled down there for another week, which was real nice. And I came back and got to work. And you know, what was working? Rest of it sitting in my uh, sitting in my bank account. What was working with Ito like? I know you had studied him for quite a while. What was that experience oh, like for you? Oh, I man. Totally expanded my, my view of everything. You know, I, I had the, the movement culture. It was like here, it was like in this bubble. Um, and, and once I went to work with him, my idea of it went just expanded, expanded, expanded. You know, it, it's, yeah, it's, the guy's on another level. It's amazing what he's capable of and the things that he comes up with. I know you've talked about moving around sticks with your feet before. What are some other things that most of us normal people would consider mind-blowing that you've got into now with the whole movement? Mmm. Softness. What's that? Yeah, softness, being loose. Being soft in every inch of your body, no tension. That was like one of the big things we worked on when I was out there. It's just uh, letting go of all that tension in your body. That's when you create that power, you create that snap. Every time I talk to you, Landon, there's this more zen-likeness, this more understanding going on at you. So where is the mindset at now? Here now, bro. On this interview. <laughs> That's where it is. Just enjoying everything as it comes? Yeah, right in the moment. It's the only way to live. And do you ever sit back to think that this moment that you're... You're in, you're living, is something that you've been envisioning and dreaming about for so long. Yeah, I just put a post on Twitter the other day saying how it's, uh, it's pretty fucking amazing to have my life unfold in the way that I've envisioned it since I was 13 years old. You know, I, I had an idea of what my life was going to look like and it's, it's coming to fruition time and time again and I love it. The movements and what the stuff that you've gotten into now bringing into your fight game. Do you see how other people are starting to pick up that stuff too? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. People are starting to get movement coaches, you know, they're starting to, you see, I see everybody, you know, a couple years ago, you go to a gym, you'd be in this gym and you, the only person you see in here sitting in a squat was myself. 
or some of the Asian cats that came through. Now you see everybody squatting in between sessions. You know, they're, they're squatting while with their uh, watching great teach technique, squatting on the side of the mat. People, yeah, it's just. And what does squatting yeah. do versus kneeling versus just a natural cross resting leg. position, man? But most people can't do it. So it's a uh, it's good hip, ankle, knee, lower back. Okay. I don't want to make it sound as simple, but it sounds like a lot of this is you're watching the natural movements of a monkey almost. Yeah, more or less. I mean, kind of, you see how yeah, they're sitting we're, on a tree we're just, and stuff. We're, we're like monkeys, but we move in more complex patterns and we're able to do more than they are in a movement capability and movement sense. Yeah, but similar to what they do, yeah. We're very close to them in, in ancestry. As we've evolved and got away from them, but it still sounds like those basics are still the same kind of thing, the natural resting position. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you look at um, any any tribes, any traditional tribes in Africa and South America, and, you know, they all rest in squats. UFC, back under the bright lights. Keep making a statement. Do you even care about where you are in the division, or are you just taking names as you as they come? You're in a big division. I mean, it's cool to see uh, to see where I'm ranked in the division, but you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna rise up it fast, 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 man. I'm gonna just jump the rankings right to the top. So I don't care where I'm at right now. It's where I'm gonna be. High expectations of a world title. Yeah. Why do you believe you reach those goals? Because I enjoy it, man. People take shit too seriously. I'm having fun with it. People that have fun with it do the best. Do you think that's part of the mental side that 100%. you're able to compartment and relax? 100%. Some people get it's too play, emotional. It's play, yeah. You, you know, uh, I could try to give you an analogy, but I think I have one on the top of my head. But all right, here's a, here's a good one. You, you, you take uh, an adult and a kid, and you try to teach them something new, uh, physical activity. The adult worries about if they're gonna fall, if they're gonna get hurt. The kid wants to know what happens if he does this, if he does this, all right? It's two different mindsets. The kid picks it up 10 times as fast as the adult because he doesn't worry. He's having fun with it. People take this shit too serious. Like, oh, most of the fighters, what, what's going to happen if I lose? What's going to happen if this happens? Oh, man, I said this in the interview and I'm going to look like an idiot afterwards. Like, no, nah, I'm just fucking having fun, man. Like, you know, it's, it's just fun for me. So I pick things up way quicker. I perform better. There's no pressure. There's no stress. And I just love what I do. Have you always been able to channel this worry-free mindset? This is, I know this is you as long as we've been talking. Yeah, you know, probably like the past like four or five years. Yeah, I used to be way more stressed when I wrestled in high school, wrestled in college when I first came out here. It's just something that's uh, grown upon me gradually, and I'm really thankful for it. Was it one of those things where you overstressed the situation, look back at it, like either way the result wasn't as magnanimous or as, you know, depressing as you thought it could be? No, just, uh, just kind of naturally happened, you know. I, I like to read a lot, and just upon my studies, I just came across, you know, different mindsets and, you know, Taoism and Zen Buddhism and all this other stuff. And I later just talk about, you know, just life's fun. Enjoy it. Do some serious about shit. And being in a gym that's one of the world's biggest, and we can't even count how many dudes coming out of here yeah. a day, talking to other dudes, do you see how different your mindset is or your yeah, yeah, your yeah. view is of MMA compared to other people? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, my mindset's very different, man. I think most people take it way too serious. And, and you can see people who, who have fun with it until a certain point, and then they start getting too serious and they start falling apart. Yeah, you can see those transitions happen. The mistakes rise and, and the pressure goes on. People start breaking. So it's a, it's a continual battle and a lot of people lose it, unfortunately. I know this is going to be your third fight in the octagon. I can't remember. Is this the first one in Vegas? First one in Vegas, yeah. Anything special about going to the home of the UFC or post-fight plans, the strip? Yeah, just chill, man. I've been there before, but not to fight. So it should be fun. Just excited to fight, man. Awesome. Lana Venata, happy to talk to you as always. Can't wait to see you in action at UFC 209. Awesome. Thank you, brother.